Rockets lost even while winning game four last night. The herd starts right now. Undisputed. Here we go on a Tuesday. This is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, we are live in Los Angeles on iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. Absolutely packed today. And Joy Taylor is joining me on a Tuesday. We're back on TV today. Joy, how are you? I'm great. Good morning. Good morning. Last night was a big NBA night. Huge. A lot of storylines today. <laughs> Going two different directions, it seems. Let's start with the Warriors Rockets. That was the second game. That's the game more people watch. So, uh, my job, I always feel my job is sort of to be the judge. You're the jury. Fans are the jury. And the teams and the coaches are the, you know, the prosecuting attorney, the defense attorney. Uh, my job is to be the judge. Take the emotion out of it. Call it as I see it. Um, you know, I, I had a favorite team or two when was, I was a kid. But mostly, if you're great, Tom Brady, LeBron, Alabama football, I talk about you a bunch. It's not my job to be interesting. Uh, your job is to be interesting, and then I talk about you, and hopefully that's interesting. Um, but let's talk about the Rockets and the Warriors. If you're a Houston fan today, part of that jury, you believe Houston could have won all four games. Can't believe they didn't. If you're a Golden State fan this morning, you believe we should have won all four games. I'm not a fan of either. So I think I can be totally objective here. Here's what I saw, and I'd worry if I was Houston. Last night, the officials did allow more physical play. They allowed the Rockets to muck it up, as they say. Houston also played much crisper basketball. For Golden State, Clay Thompson was atrocious. Steph disappeared for two quarters. Andre Iguodala was as bad as he can be. Golden State's bench, not great to begin with, was awful. And yet on the road, Golden State got two great looks to tie the game from their two best shooters. If I'm Golden State this morning, I actually feel great. It doesn't happen very often in sports. When I go on the road, lose both games, and I'm flying home thinking, we're good here. First of all, game three went to overtime. Biggest game in the last 10 years for the Houston Rockets. Second biggest game last year, game seven, the biggest against Golden State. And that game went to overtime. Last night, the refs allowed more physical play. I'm not saying the refs won it, but they allowed the Houston style. As Steve Kerr said after the game, Houston's got middle linebackers. We got volleyball players. <laughs> okay, the refs allowed bang on KD, be physical, and the refs allowed it. And they often do allow that at home. Clay was atrocious. Steph was mostly bad. Draymond Green had two awful fourth quarter turnovers. The Warriors shot 24% on threes. Between Clay and Steph, they were five for 20 beyond the arc. And Golden State got great looks to tie that game. How did that game almost go to overtime? How did that game almost go to overtime? Houston was the better team for three and a half hours. And I'm sitting there. Houston was up 10 with four minutes to go. I mean, I'm Golden State. Remember, Golden State doesn't have to win in Houston. Game five and game seven, those are at Oracle. Last year, Golden State got down in this series, down 3-2. They had to win a road game. They do not have to win a road game. Golden State's good here. Now, are they being pressured? Yes. Is Steph's dislocated finger a problem? Yeah, he's shooting 12 for 46 on threes. I'd say his dislocated finger is not doing him any favors. That's not an excuse. That's a reason. He's got a dislocated finger. I mean, James Harden does have a red eye, but it's not a dislocated finger. It is a little concerning that Steph is 12 for 46 on threes. He's just not shooting well. And it's not just that he's missing. He's missing open threes, like lots of them. But I think Draymond Green talked after the game, and I think he speaks for a lot of guys on that flight back to the Bay Area for the Warriors. I think our vibe is just great because everybody's just looking at each other. Like, we know if we just correct the effort things, we're just fine. Um, and so, every, you know, everybody's spirits up. Um, you know, everyone's feeling good. We know the answer to our problem. And, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty exciting because you know that's that's my department to lead in and i know i'll lead in that department and bring it and if i do i have no doubt that everyone else will follow and and we'll win this is not a a, a joyless team this morning if you can play as bad 
as Golden State did. I mean, has Clay Thompson ever been that bad? Iggy was awful. The bench was bad. Steph couldn't play for about two quarters. And the referees, this is just part of the NBA. When you're at home, physical teams tend to get a few more calls at home. And this Houston team is built to be physical. I mean, Tucker's not your typical NBA player. He's a middle linebacker with a jumper. Uh, and the refs kind of let him have it. But I, I would feel great if I'm Golden State today. Let's shift to this. Milwaukee is putting a stranglehold on uh, Boston. So yesterday I talked about something all day. My mantra, we were not on TV. We were on a podcast, radio, so forth. But my, my, my mantra yesterday was don't confuse talent with valuable. A lot of times talent is valuable, but some people are just talented and don't necessarily play well with others. I'm going to give you three stats in the NBA. And, and these are not just let these soak in. Number one, when KD scores over 40, the Warriors are six and seven. So the best basketball team on the planet isn't just average. They're well below their level of excellence when KD has his best nights. <laughs> it doesn't work that way when Steph has his best nights. They're like 12 and three. Let that soak in for a second. Don't let it just fly past you. The Warriors are bad when KD's at his greatest. Here's a second one. The Raptors... We're 17 and 5 without Kawhi Leonard. What, excuse me? No, their winning percentage is significantly higher when Kawhi didn't play this year. Don't make excuses, no matter how much you like him. Let it soak in. Number three, the Boston Celtics, their points per game, their field goal percentage, their winning percentage, all goes up when Kyrie Irving doesn't play let all three of those soak in folks sometimes people are so gifted this was often the problem with kobe that you reduce the other excellent pieces around you boston has one player one a player kyrie irving he is an a and then they got a bunch of b guys gordon hayward's a b jason tatum's a b to a b minus to a b plus depending on the night al horford's a b b minus they are reduced to c's on many nights with Kyrie Irving. Boston's absolutely worse with Kyrie. Their efficiency stats drop. They're 12 and 3 when he doesn't play. They shoot worse without him on the floor. The assist numbers go down through the floor. It's hard to get your brain wrapped around this. But there are two types of superstars in the NBA. The number one group is, and we love these kind of guys. These guys are alpha. They're very much, they're very much our guys in America. We're aggressive as a country. Canada's nice. We're not so nice. We're aggressive. We like alphas. The first type of superstar in the NBA is get a bucket guy. Kevin Durant's the best in the world. Michael Jordan was the best ever. Kobe was the best ever west of Chicago. Kyrie Irving's a top five. Kawhi Leonard may be number two in the NBA. Get a bucket, guys. Alphas. And we love them. We yell at LeBron when he doesn't take the last shot. The second type of superstar is a playmaker. On his best nights, the team also flourishes. LeBron James, Magic Johnson, Steph Curry, uh, the Joker in Denver, CP3. But in America, we tend to like get a bucket star. But remember in school on your report card, there was always that doesn't play well with others. I've said this before. Kawhi Leonard's amazing. So is Kevin Durant. But they don't always play well with others. Toronto was 17-5 and five without him. The Spurs won a bunch of games when he didn't play. Remember those numbers? You do. We talked about it for years. And Kevin Durant, by the way, they're 6-7 and seven when he goes off. Kawhi Leonard has the ball in his hands constantly. He averages three assists a game. His usage rate is among highest in the league. <laughs> and he averages three assists. I'm not even playing, and I'm only three behind him. So this Celtic loss, it's on Kyrie. He's a get-a-bucket guy. Brad Stevens, it should be noted, is not a get-a-bucket coach. This roster is filled with guys who often need each other to play their best basketball. And Kyrie just needs a ball and it doesn't work and I thought it would and I thought it would get better and I'm wrong and it didn't and it hasn't and Shaq and the fellas talked about this 
after the loss last night to Milwaukee, the better team. You can't complain about not being a man. As to be the man now that you are the man, you got to step up. This is the time you got to step up. I don't want to hit no skill. I don't want to hit none of that. If you shoot 22 times, you better hit more than seven shots in the playoffs. Yeah, I don't want to share the limelight with LeBron. Okay, so I want my own team. Then. Now, this is the price you pay. That's the way it works. People never say, man, Mark West didn't win the championship. They never said, <laughs> said Sabalos didn't win the championship. But I love both of those guys. They said Charles Barkley didn't win the championship. That's the way it is. And that's what Kyrie, he says, I want to be my own man. And now you're your own man who's going on vacation Thursday morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, KD's the best basketball player right now in the world. But he's a get-a-bucket guy. On his best nights, the Warriors have a losing record. Kawhi Leonard's the second best get-a-bucket guy in the world. He's a very good two-way player. But the Spurs and the Raptors have won a lot of games without him. How many games does Denver win without Jokic? They're, I'm not sure they're a playoff team. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're not. And Kyrie Irving, he's a get-a-bucket get guy. He's an A. He's a get-a-bucket guy. But he turns all those B, B-pluses, B, B-minuses around him into Cs. They just stand around and observe him. This is on him. Milwaukee's better. They play better defense. Giannis is playing out of this world. They actually have a bench that can score. But you want to be the man, this is what the man looks like. Coming up next, uh, uh, NBA fans, be careful what you root for. You may get stuck with something that's not as appealing as you think. Uh, Mother's Day is coming up, May 12th. That is next weekend. We all know moms were there for us. There's, there's almost nothing you wouldn't do to make that special mom in your life happy, whether it's your mom, your grandma, your sister, your sister-in-law, kids' godmother, whatevs. Sherry's Berries has special Mother's Day's berries designed just for mom. Chocolate chips, pink shimmer sugar, swizzles, great gourmet goodies. You choose your delivery day to ensure mom gets her gift next weekend. Satisfaction always guaranteed. Don't wait. Don't wait.